Hello there ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to take a look at Animal Crossing New Horizons 2.0 update and Happy Home Paradise DLC. Fans were hoping on a big update for a while when Nintendo said they were going to release something big for Animal Crossing soon and this is it. They've added a lot of new features and a few quality of life features that were highly requested so I'm going to go through all of them one by one. Nintendo don't always give a really detailed patch notes of their updates so the community has to figure out a lot on their own. If you want to read the official patch notes I'm going to link it down in the description. For the rest of you who wants to continue watching, I'm gonna go in with more details. I'm gonna list all the main things that they added and changed. I'm also gonna show you guys how to unlock or get them as well. If I miss something, don't freak out because there are in fact a lot of things that I've added, so bear with me. So first off, Brewster has been added. He is a pigeon cafe owner. He has previously appeared in other Animal Crossing games, fulfilling the same role, which is to serve coffee to villagers in your town or in this case, island. He doesn't really have a real purpose in this game currently in the sense that he doesn't have a function. His existence is purely for you to go there and grab a cup of coffee. You can also invite any villager to the cafe and you can share a cup with them as well and unlock secret interactions or new info about them but that's pretty much it. The coffee doesn't grant you any special buffs or effects, which is a shame. Would be cool if you could run faster for like an hour after drinking the coffee or something, similarly to Stardew Valley. To get Brewster himself, you need to first talk to Bladders in the museum. He'll talk about Brewster himself, and then he'll tell you to look for him on a mystery island filled with gyroids. Gyroids only appear specifically on Cap'n's mystery island, so after talking to Bladders, head over to Cap'n, which is another new character we're going to talk about after, he is located at the pier of your island, which is that empty wood board near the water. He will bring you to a mystery island on which Brewster will be guaranteed to appear. You simply talk to him and go back to Bladders again. He'll tell you that the museum will be under renovation for the next day, so the day after that, Brewster's cafe, The Roost, will be opened. The cafe itself is open 24-7, so you can access it at any time, like anywhere in the museum. Moving on to Cap'n, like I said, he offers you the opportunity to visit a mystery island that are different from the ones from the Nuke Miles ticket. You can find him at the pier on his motorboat. It only costs 1,000 Nuke Mile as opposed to 2,000 Nuke Miles for a Nuke Miles ticket. However, you can only visit one mystery island of his per day. He has a unique loading screen in which he sings his sea shanties. You can choose to skip this by pressing the B button multiple times or you can enjoy it and express yourself using the AX and Y buttons. His islands offer a variety of new combined stuffs from the new update and from traditional mystery islands. Everything you find in Nook Miles' mystery island, you can find it on his islands. You can find bushes, new flowers, new produces. Produces are the new food components that can be used to make food. For example, tomatoes, potatoes, sugarcane, etc. There are multiple ways of obtaining them, which I'll get back to later as well. There are also different special types of island he can offer as well. For example, Shooting Star Island, Vine Island, Money Tree Island, etc. One other thing about them that is unique is the fact that you can always find one recipe in a bottle near the shore. And there is always one guaranteed gyroid fragment. Gyroids are these little thingy that produces rhythmic sounds to the environment. If you change the ambient music using a radio or something similar, they also adapt to the music. Pretty cool, right? While we're at it, you can produce a gyroid by planting the fragment and watering it. Unlike trees which don't need watering to grow, you have to water the fragments. After doing so, you can notice a little bubble of air coming out of the marked spot, which means it has been watered. It also works when it rains, obviously, so if you're lazy, you can save all the fragments for a rainy day and plant them all at once. It only takes them one day for them to be fully grown. They won't grow out of the ground, so the mark spot will still visually look the same, you just have to dig them up again. And that's it, you can put them on tables or hang them on walls. Gyroids can also appear on your island after a rainy day, so be on the lookout for that as well. Cooking and farming has been finally added. You can start cooking by redeeming the DIY recipes plus from the Nook Mouse Terminal and the starting cooking recipes at Nook's Cranny. It'll give you a handful of cooking recipes to get you started, but to cook you have to have in your possessions the ingredients required and a cooking station. Some food may only need fruits, some may only need fish, however most requires the essential ingredients of the produce. Like I said before, potatoes, tomatoes, and such. To obtain those, you have two ways. Leave the Botanist Loth is the main provider for produces. He visits you once every two weeks. You usually can only buy bushes and flowers from him, but starting now you can also buy vegetables and other plantables. 
Only two types will be available to be bought at a time. They'll be rotating every time he appears on your island, or you can have him on Haru's island, where you can check on him weekly to see the new produces that he has on display. I'll talk about Harv's Island in a moment. The second way of obtaining produces is by visiting Mystery Islands on Cap'n's boat. Once in a while you'll end up on an island filled with tomatoes or carrots or even sugar canes. And once you have gathered all the ingredients, you can start cooking by interacting with a stovetop. Most items with the word kitchen in it can be used as a stovetop to cook. The DIY that you redeemed earlier from the terminal and bought from Nook's Crannies contain a free recipe to make a stonework kitchen. You can use that if you don't have any kitchen item in your possession. And just like crafting, you'll have a crafting menu but for food. Select the food you want to cook and voila. You can choose to eat the food or display it. Most of us will probably display it. The food itself once again does not grant any extra buffs or effects, so it's purely cosmetic. You can obtain other cooking recipes similarly to regular crafting recipes, from balloons, bottles, or from villagers inside their houses. Some recipes are automatically unlocked when you catch a certain type of fish, so be on the lookout for those as well. Most food items can be cooked directly using recipes, however not all food items are available through cooking. Some food items only exist as the item itself at Nook's Crannies, just like most items. They're considered common items, so they'll likely show up on the countertop in front of the entrance. Harv's Island received a little expansion. Once you start the game after updating, you'll receive a mail telling you that Harv's having a little something at his island. Once you travel to his island, you'll notice a path leading up to a previously blocked off right side of Harv's studio. Cross the path and he'll introduce you to Harriet, which is one of the new guest villagers that will teach you new hairstyles. But the big juicy part of this new area is that you can donate bells to invite some guest villagers over here permanently. You can have in total 7 of them, and 2 of them being brand new. Starting with Katrina, who is a fortune teller, she can tell you your luck of the day or your current friendship status with one of your villagers by offering her 1000 bells. The second new returning character is Tortimer. He act as a storage unit for this area, he can connect you to your storage at home without you to travel back and forth. Every now and then, during a new season, if you talk to him, he also offers you a few items of the current season. For example, during fall, he offers acorns. The rest of the villagers are Sahara for carpets, walls, and flooring, Cyrus and Reese for customizing non-craftable items, Leaf for plants and produces, like I said before. And one new thing about Leaf is he can offer you to remove all the weeds on your island for the low low price of a hundred thousand bells. Red is also there for arts and raffle, which by the way used to be exclusive during the fireworks show in August, now you can make it permanent here. Finally, kicks for shoes, socks, and backpacks. Each of them requires a donation of 100,000 bells. The holdback is that you can only donate and construct a plot for one of them at a time per day. Once you've donated the full amount, you only need to have to wait one extra day to have this specific villager appear there. Although those villagers can settle there permanently, there are still days that they can appear on your own island as before, so if you can't find a villager on Harv's Island, it's because they're on your own island. With 2.0 also comes a new feature called Ordinances. It allows you to set the identity for your island. There are currently four options. Beautiful Island allows everyone on the island to get rid of weeds, water flowers, and get rid of the trash in the waters. Early Bird Island allows residents and shop to be active and open earlier in the morning. Night Owl Island is the opposite, and Bell Boom Island, however, is different. It causes everything on the island to sell for more, but also cost more. To change ordinance, you simply have to go talk to Isabel and pay a fee of 20,000 bells for each change. The ordinance will be applied the following day on Onward. These are all of the big features introduced in this update, now we're moving on to the smaller parts gradually. Next up, there are new items and recipes that can be redeemed with the Nuke Miles Terminal, of which includes new fences, a donation box, and a wooden storage shed. Other things that can also be redeemed are new hairstyles, the new pro camera mode that allows you to take pictures in first person, Island Life 101 which is basically extra tooltips during loading screens, new reactions, 
A pro decorating license that allows you to build on the ceiling of your house and apply accent walls. A custom fencing license that allows you to customize common fences. A pro constructing license that allows you to build a maximum of 10 bridges and 10 inclines instead of 8. And finally, custom design patterns plus which allows you to create patterns. If you want to redeem all of them excluding the furnitures, it's going to cost you at least 25,000 nook miles which is hella expensive. Another new recipe that is freely available is is the ladder setup kit which allows you to permanently place a ladder at a select location. You can have the default version and Nook's Cranny but there are also other variations of the ladder setup kit the recipe that you have to discover for yourself. Obviously new items and new crafting and cooking recipes have been added. Celeste also gives you new recipes. According to data miners, there are more than 9,000 new items available, however that is all including the extra variations of the same items, so for example blue Q chair and red Q chair are considered two different items in the game. So with that in mind, we're more around a thousand new items, which is still a lot, don't get me wrong. Some items also have been renamed either because they belong in the new set of furnitures or it was to make them more accurate. Of those items also includes new KK slider songs. Some items are also exclusive to new shopping, so be sure to check in there to find new items as well. Once you've paid off all your house loan, you have also the option to redeem an ABD terminal and a storage shed in the Nook Mall shop. Both of them allows you to access them wherever you place them on your island and they also work on other players islands as well. Outside the resident services building you'll notice a tape deck player interacting with it allows you to start a stretching exercise with your villagers at any time. They will be forced to wake up and be played by you. During stretching you use either Joy-Cons motion or controller buttons to perform an exercise routine that lasts for about 2 minutes. You can now store DIY recipes inside your home storage. You can only lay them around in the house previously which was super annoying because they take a lot of space if you wanted to save some of them for your friends or to sell them to other players. Storage themselves can now store up to 5000 items which means you can upgrade it 3 extra times from the previous maximum amount. Isabel now also announces which guest villager appears on your island for the day during her new day announcement. For most, she mentions their name directly, but for others, she faintly hints you which villager by description. Once you complete a section of the museum, you can also receive a dedicated poster of that section. If you've previously finished a section of the museum before the update, you can talk to Bladders again once you've finished a quest for finding Brewster, and he'll give you the posters, and he'll also give you the option to buy extras if you ever wish so. You can upload up to 2,000 designs in the custom design portal for those of you who manage to create that many custom designs. With every new feature also comes new Nook Miles tasks, for example you might have dig up a gyroid or do a group stretching task mixed with the old ones. Villagers also have plenty of new interactions and dialogues themselves. They can now visit your house unannounced, you can interact with them as usual while they're in the house or play minigames, which is one of the new features that they added for villagers. The only problem is that if they come in, you can't decorate your house anymore. If you talk to a villager, you'll be able to interact with them and play minigames, but the only way to make them leave your house is for you to leave your house yourself. Yep, it's kinda dumb. There's currently no toggle for the option to let your villager come in your house or not, so it might be a mild inconvenience for most people, including me. That's about everything for the base update, and now I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about Happy Home Paradise DLC. Although it is a DLC, it features a key element that was underdeveloped in the base game, which was the progress system. And because of this, I'm going to have a spoiler warning right here. Everything in the DLC can be easily unlocked by progressing through it, so if you want to know absolutely everything that the DLC provides you, here we go. Happy Home Paradise is what I think what Animal Crossing New Horizons should have been, or largely should have been. Remember the story progression system they had in the base game? Yeah, practically none. You build your house, the shops, and the museum, and that was pretty much it. At the end you unlock a few extra tools and recipes, but you don't unlock anything else by progressing. Outside the fish, bugs, and fossils, everything else is found by either popping balloons or buying them at Nook's Cranny. It was extremely bland. You played because you absolutely wanted to build the perfect island, and with everything being limited to the per day system, it was really deteriorative to the players who wanted to continue playing. Happy Home Paradise provides a nice balance to almost everything from the base game. You unlock new techniques, new buildings, new items, and you can do it however much you want to. There are three requirements before actually unlocking the DLC. If you've recently started a new file, you'll have to have the resident services built, have your own house built, 
The initial tent that you start off with doesn't count as a house and you must have finished the DIY workshop which is I believe one of the quests that Tom New gives you at the beginning of the game. Once you've installed and unlocked the DLC, the next time you boot up the game you will automatically be meeting Loti, a longtime friend of Tom Nuke who used to work together. She is planning on hosting an island where she can fulfill the dream vacation home request from various villagers. Tom Nuke naturally will be recommending you to be the main home designer for Loti, you'll be on the Paradise Planning Island. It doesn't have a name, so whenever you want to go there, you have to select the I want to go to work option when you go to the airport. Alongside other employees, Nico and Wardell, you'll be the main lead designer for those homes. Random villagers will be scattered across the main beach, you can choose which one to be your client manually. Upon approaching them, they'll have a thought bubble describing very quickly what they would want their homes to be like. Once you meet them officially, they'll have a more concrete idea of what you should do based on what furniture they are asking you to put in or outside the house. You only need two things to complete a design, include all the required items, and if you're inside, have enough space so the villager can move around the house. The rest is up to you. With each home completed, you can use furnitures from previous home designs to the current ones. Once you're done with one vacation home, Loti, the manager, will pay you in a new type of currency called Pokey, which can be only used on this particular island. Unlike Bells, they do not take inventory space, so you can earn as much as you want without worrying filling up your pockets. You can use pokies to buy the exclusive items found within the same building of the paradise planning or use them to buy items at facilities which I'm gonna talk about later. At first you might seem that pokies are hard to earn and that everything is very expensive but the game is very generous you will soon be having too much of it after a few homes completed and with more homes completed you will also unlock new techniques to further improve different aspects of the interior. And like I said you can unlock everything by naturally progressing through the DLC so no secret way of unlocking anything in here. As for the techniques themselves, there are resizing rooms, windows and entrance modifications, polishing which allows you to apply particle effects on items, lightings which allows you to change the intensity and the color of the light of the current room, partition walls, an item that can separate a room with an extension of the wall, soundscapes which allows you to apply specific ambient noise to a room, counters, and pillars. There are also other features but they can only be used for the DLC so they are less important than the ones I just listed which can also be applied to your own house. These features are exclusive to the DLC so if you don't have the DLC you can't apply these techniques. After designing a few homes you'll be promoted, you'll be paid even more than usual, you can wear new uniforms and you'll also have the option to design what's called a facility, service buildings to be more technically precise. You can create a school, a restaurant, a cafe, a hospital and an apparel shop. It might seem like they are extra cosmetic buildings but they actually provide something useful for the player. You can hire any previous client villagers to be working in those facilities, talking to them allows you to be able to receive different things. If you talk to the teacher at the school, they can give you a bush start. If you talk to the chef at the restaurant, you can obtain a cooking recipe. If you talk to cafe employees, they can sell you different food items and this is where you can use the extra pokies you've earned so far. If you talk to the doctor at the hospital, you can receive a quick checkup and depending on what you answer, they will give you a specific clothing item. Yeah, this one doesn't make any sense but free stuff is free. And finally, you can buy specific clothings at the apparel shop. One extra thing for the hospital, you can donate 120,000 pokies to unlock a second floor expansion. After playing a certain amount of time, Loti will have an automated bell and pokey dispenser where you can exchange pokies for bell and vice versa. You'll also have an extra application on your phone that allows you to see every homes you've designed so far and you can also discover what other people have been designing after a few homes completed as well. A few other things to mention, you can find a daily message in a bottle on the paradise island just like on your own island. You may have noticed that there are vines and moss growing on top of the hill of the island. They are infinitely regenerating daily so you have an infinite supply of those as opposed to without the DLC which you have to find on a vine island on Cap'n's Mystery Island and they're not always guaranteed so it is way less reliable outside the DLC. It's a form of pay to win if you wish to believe it. If you have bought enough items from the counter, Wardell may let you access the full catalog of items that you have used for designing homes so far and you can order any 5 items from the list just like in Nuke Shopping by using pokies. And finally, after designing 30 homes, KK will host a concert and this will end the story part of the DLC. After that, you can officially change the interior of your own villager's house back at your island. Although you can use all the new features for their homes, you cannot change the size of the rooms itself. 
for some odd reasons. Even after finishing the story part of the DLC, the progress doesn't stop there. You'll be able to unlock other stuff as well such as a bigger restaurant and a bigger cafe. And that's pretty much everything. I personally like Happy Home Paradise a lot because of the fact that you can do a lot of things that you can't exactly do in the base game. Mainly you can decorate as much as you want without being limited to having to collect every items or DIY recipes. Although DIY recipes are interesting and unique, the fact that you can constantly collect duplicate of the same recipe is really annoying. It slows down the pace drastically for no reason, like just let me play the game in the pace that I want it to be. I shouldn't be limited in the game about creativity. It's dumb. So for that reason, I'm thankful for the DLC. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope it helped. I'll get back to you whenever I have something new to show. Alright, later. Arr.